Hello, and welcome to the Aftermath of Dynamite. I am Anika, and we're going to review Dynamite that happened on April 17th. Alright, to get things started, Daddy's home. John Moxley has come home from New Japan World Wrestling, and he is now their new heavyweight champion. And so he would just, he would just pat himself on the back, and why would you? Because it's been five years to make it for him. This is a very big goal of his. And he was like, people say I couldn't do it, but bam, I did it. And that's what AEW is all about. You can say what you want about us, but we're going to do our darnest to get what we want. And this is the rah rah speech that you should have. Okay, so, for, ref for, for clear, to make everyone clear, everyone's heart and minds together, if it's not John Moxley doing the rah rah speech, at least. Tell, at least ask him who should do the rah-rah speech. No one else should do it, <laughs> right? So he did the rah-rah speech in John Moxley form, but it ties into a story about, hey, yeah, I was gone, and I saw Mr. Don Callis, your boys, attacking my boys, Claudio and Danielson, and I ain't going to fly with me. So I'm calling out your, back, your biggest dude, Mr. Hobbs, next Wednesday on Dynamite. Be ready. We fighting. I missed him, and I'm glad he's back. Okay, next up, we have Miss Mercedes addressing her attack from last week. He, she was like, huh, you so scared. You did it in the dark, but you know what? I'm coming after you. And I'm coming after the whole women's division. Hopefully, that will be sped up a little faster. Because <laughs> I, I want to see you wrestle. That's only, I want to see you wrestle. I want to see this story progress a little bit faster. That is just me, right? So next we have what was supposed to be a full-on intergender, intergender match between Adam Copeland and Willow versus Julia Hart and Brody King, but Willow got her in the back. We didn't know. We didn't see who did it. So mysterious attacker. <laughs> she says she can go, but doctors still want to clear her. So that leads to Adam Cole, sorry, Adam Copeland going against Brody King virtually by themselves for the next we'll say 75% of the match, right? But Willow is Willow. You ain't gonna keep her down. So at the very end she's like, I'm good, I'm good. Back up off me. I'm going to the ring. And then I get what I wanted. I have this whole match which was this a, this little snippet, just a little snippet. Miss Willow fires herself up. She does a cross body on Mr. Brody King. She hypes up everybody. Who? 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 And boom, does a cannonball to Brody King in the corner. We think it's we think it's all good in the hood, but Miss Julia wants to use a doggone freaking chain. Knocks Willow out from the back. Put in a submission. House of Black wins. You hate to see it. <sighs> All right, we're going to fast forward now. And now we're doing interviews with Miss Renee Briquette. Um, First one was our champion, Samoa Joe. And he, she was she was just like, hey, you seemed a little afraid last week. It was a little fear in your eyes. He was like, I was afraid because Swerve had his hand, dirty hands on my belt. And I wanted to, I need to get it disinfected. I love my Joe. And mostly, and then mostly in this interview, he was like, this is how... Not... How Joe's gonna win, but how Swerve is gonna lose because he's a choke artist. All of his singles titles, I'm gonna put singles in there because lest we not forget, Swerve and Mr. Keith Lee, that's no, her, yeah, Keith Lee, I think it was someone else, <laughs> were tag team champions. So he was a champion, so we're just gonna put, so we're, I'm gonna clean up for you. Singles, Swerve going after singles. He hasn't gotten it just yet. And so basically, Joe's like, he's a choke artist. And on Sunday, I'm going to choke him out. I don't want Joe to lose. All right, next. <laughs> next up, we were going to have a video package of the rivalry between FTR and the Young Bucks. But our EVP said, you know what? That's This is a waste of, 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 of TV time. This is a waste of TV time. So during... The freaking video, they said, scratch it. You can hear them oh, in the back, scratch it, scratch it. We're not doing it. And they're like, <laughs> we're just going to do our trios match. And with Mr. Okada, we're going to win, and it's going to be great. And Okada was like, all of you are going, 
I want to say to, to, to die, but it was something different. Basically, Okada ended it. It was great. They said, TK, hit our music. Where's the elevator ramp? And so, <laughs> they're stupid. They're so stupid. So we have the Young Bucks and Okada versus Daniel Garcia. Yes. Mr. Bastard Pack. Yes. And Mr. Penta. Little Nil. And it was so good good you like how can it not be good with these six people but it was so good uh side note um mr mr garcia i i know you like to do the dance i don't want your balls in people's face <laughs> i'm sorry he had one of the bugs in the ring he was raining down blows he picked it up and he started doing his dance while I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Not not be, not not because not because of what you think. I'm just saying, as a grown man to another grown man, your balls ain't gonna be in my face. Two things. Two things I don't like about wrestling. You ain't gonna, our privates gonna be our privates aren't gonna be that close. And you only spit in my face. I don't like. I don't like it. I don't like it. But we can you know what? I digress. I digress. And then, also, however, what was I gonna say? The match was also still entertaining. More so because before picture and, during picture and picture and a little bit after, thank God, Mr. Matthew Jackson wanted to do a little commentary, and so he picks up the freaking mic, and so he, so while they're going at it, he he's doing commentary, and then after picture and picture, he goes into Daniel Garcia. He's like, "Show me what you got. Why did we hire you?" And Mr. In you're not hitting him so of course mr garcia is gonna power up he goes for a suplex and Max's like no no put, put, me down, put me down he didn't put he puts him down went back on his neck so that was hilarious unfortunately it's all elite all day so mr rainmaker hits the rainmaker and it's one two three now it can't just be the end of the match right so the young bucks get a ladder they're like we're gonna prove we're gonna show you why we this this ladder match for the tag titles is in our favor. They're gonna they put Pack in in between the ladders. They're gonna slam it, but Mr. Bastard had his faithful little hammer back, and he just fought everyone off. And this Sunday's gonna be great. That's all I gotta say. The Sunday's gonna be so good. Okay, and then we have another interview with with Renee Paquette, but this one with Swerve. Ooh, and so. Renee was like, you know what? I just had an interview with Joe. He's like, you're gonna choke. How do you, how do you feel about that? He was like, uh, you know, Joe's a big talker, but I, I, but you can see the fear in his eyes. You know, I was like, yeah, I would choke, but it ain't happening this Sunday. You like, you know what? I ain't even gonna say any more. We're gonna finish this conversation in the ring, face to face. Great little cliffhanger, right? Right? Okay. So next we have a women's match. We have the virtuosa Diana Peraza versus fake Tony Storm Mariah May. And it was very good. It was very good and very decent. Um the crowd was definitely into it. A lot of ground and pound, a whole lot of New Japan heart strikes. It hurts, but it's wrestling. You love to see it. And so the virtuoso gets the win, but Miss Tony Storm did not like that. She was side, she was on the um coaching on the side. And so um after the match ends, she attacks Deanna. But Mr. Miss Thunder Rosa comes in and just goes balls to the walls, attacking Luther, laid him out, attack Mariah May, attack Tony. Deanna had a little attitude to my I didn't I don't need your help and he and Rosa was like, I didn't come to help you. I'm coming to whip me behind. And so <laughs> Deanna leaves and Rosa gets some lipstick. He's like, okay, you want to mess with my face paint? You just need a little lipstick right here. So she just smurves it all over her face. <laughs> Tony manages to get out. This is my Thunder Rosa. This is why I loved her. And you, you have to know the strengths of your wrestlers. You have to know what's going to make them shine. And Thunder Rosa being a badass is what makes her shine. This match, I'm going to, I have no doubt this match is going to be great. I just wish they would have had more badass than the Thunder Rosa at the beginning of the show. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. All right. All right. 
and then I'm going to back it up because we did have a segment, a segment between Hook and Chris Jericho. Now, yeah, I know I don't. Chris Jericho needs to go home. That's my opinion. But if you're going to do it, let's go. Let's go forth. Let's get this on and pop it. Right? Right. So they have this segment and basically Jericho is like why aren't you listening to me I'm the veteran just look at my history everyone that I have gone against have been better good good, good showing us and I won't I won't let you suck me into this stupidness okay and so but I love Hook just saying no <laughs> like I don't have to I, that, that's, I love that I love that because like why again do you think I need to listen to you? I, I really don't. I, I just gotta be myself in that, honestly, in this world. But okay. But the nice little the like what I did like is they had Taz come into the ring. He was he was the mediator, right? He, he was trying to get things under control when Jericho was just saying stupid stuff, but Jericho is being Jericho so he ain't listening. And so uh like he's talking about how you weren't raised right for 30 years and are like hey he's like shut up number one hook's not 30 so we're just whatever and then um and then when jericho was just keep g going at hook Taz was like you know what calm down and then he pushed tax now this is why i didn't like this segment because no offense i like my parents so maybe 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 hook don't like his parents as much as i like my parents but you can push my daddy or my mama down it's on sight. I'm putting hands on you. I'm not going to stalk you, like slowly walking towards you. No, I'm pushing you back to the ground. Might be some blows in there. But what happened was, I, I guess Hook did had to register what was going on. So <laughs> he was looking around. You know, he looked at his dad. He looked at Jericho. He slow walked. He grabbed him. He put him in the corner. He's like, I'll fight you any place, any time. Get out of my ring, right? It was fine, whatever. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. Then we have a match between Shane Taylor and OC. And again, I love Shane Taylor Productions. For someone who was not is not an ROH fan back in the day, this is my first introduction of these people watching AEW and ROH. I love this group. I love Shane Taylor. I love Lee Moriarty. I even like Anthony Agogo. So. Side note, they lost. It was a great match, but they did lose. But I like I think I need y'all to do more to make this group a credible threat. Especially when this is the first time OC Orange Cassidy came to the ring with no Trent and no Chuck. So you have the story in place for him to lose, but you want to protect people. And like you don't I get you want to protect people, but sometimes with the right pin of the story and the right positioning they can afford to lose this match. But you know what? Whatever. Like I said, great match. OC over Kane Shane Taylor. Shane Taylor was going in for the fight. I believe um, Chuck was trying to come in, or some people were trying to come in and save OC. But Trent wants to still be a bad guy, so he took them all out. And so the production was looking at Trent, and it was like, they have had it. So they knocked out. OC the put the production sign flag over him. <sighs> I want my best friends to be together, but I get it. Trent is very good in this role, so have at it. And now for the main event, Mr. Claudio Casanoli versus Osprey. 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 Oh my gosh. I love both these men. I love both these men. And again, when you see two people on the card, it's like, oh, it's gonna, this is gonna slap. We just don't know how good it's gonna be. This was so freaking good. It was, they were each other's yin and yang. They were both, they, they were, cause I'm, I, I wanna get this right. Both powerful, both can do high flying stuff when necessary. It was, it was, Darn near perfect, in my opinion. We went on for 17 minutes. God, okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just say, I'm just say what happened. You can get my, you can get my vibe, right? 
so they locked up like I said both of them are both powerhouses now Mr. the little hog with the, with the muscle and so um it was really just bout for bout it was like on the outside um Claudio tried to push Osprey into the guardrail but he just jumps over it swimming swimming seamlessly and then he jumps and then he jumps to the guardrail and hits Claudio back but Claudio is Claudio so he ain't staying down and so <laughs> going to there is a whole lot of uppercuts and a whole lot of um, counters but my favorite spot oh my gosh so Claudio has Osprey he's going for the Claudio swing this fool gonna crunch up and DDT Claudio Castanoli I am not doing it just to saying it out of my mouth. So please go back and watch it. It was so freaking good. Cla and so <laughs> So Claudio kicks out. I wanna say the power driver after this. So basically, DDT, power driver, Claudio kicks out. Oh uh Osprey does the um I don't wanna get his like, his arm, his arm blade. I will get it right later. Sorry. And then one, two, three. It was so freaking good. And I want to post this question. When does Claudio get a push? And I, I know he's been ROH champion, but I need him to have a decent push on AEW because he's that dude. He's that dude. And I'm not saying world heavyweight champion, but TNT? Intercontinental, like let, let's make steps to let, let's make steps forward because. He... But I get it. Will Ospreay is Will Ospreay, so I'm I am not saying Will shouldn't have won. I'm just saying, both were great, both deserve a push. So, Will wins, but Mr. Don Callis family wants to come out and beat up Claudio. Osprey's like, what are we doing? I I didn't need y'all to do this. And he's and so his friend. Um, Cal Fletcher from New Japan was like, trust us, we got this. But you really don't because John Moxley is still in the building. So he comes out, fights all of them off. We get a toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and Will Hobbs. And every and so the Don Callis family is out of the ring. Moxley and Clyde are, are standing tall in the ring. Mr. Osprey walks by himself. He's like, I didn't ask for this. He has to break them up because Osprey don't need the Callis family, but I digress. And that was the end of Dynamite. Oh, so much better than last week. The pettiness, I feel like it's gone. Like, like, they said that TK needed to get it out. I'm pretty sure all of the pettiness is gone. And this is the AEW that we all know and love. So it was so good. A must, yeah, a must watch. Please go out and watch it. All right. Thank you for joining me in this <laughs> shorter than most review of AEW Dynamite. Have a good day. Bye.